guys, welcome! So far, we've explored all the Warlock, Royal Guard, Archbishop, and Ranger skills. If you haven't seen my previous skills demos, I'll have the videos linked down below. This time, we'll focus our attention on the new Shura skills. The Shura is one of the classes which are the most adept at dealing insane burst damage. This is extremely useful not only for MVP hunts and ET, but also for insta-killing key targets during PvP and WoW. In this video, I'll be featuring my guildmate Eldwin as we explore all the Shura skills and demonstrate each one in action. We'll take a look at the new offensive skills like Fallen Empire and Hellgate, debuff and crowd control skills like Curse Circle and Gentle Touch Silence, and all the rest of the skills including supportive and passive skills. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. Let's first start with the active buff Rising Dragon. This will summon and increase the number of spirit bombs, increase max HP and SP, and increase attack speed. Furthermore, it will activate the critical explosion state. Note that 1% of your max HP will be lost every 2 seconds when using Rising Dragon. This effect will be removed when your HP is already below 10%. At max skill level 10, Rising Dragon gives additional 10 Spirit Bombs, plus 10% max HP and SP, and plus 20% attack speed for 7 to 5 seconds. This buff is also a good combo with Asura Strike to be able to have higher damage output. In addition, activating the Rising Dragon Fearless Runes will give 2% damage and magic damage reduction. There are 5 Rising Dragon Fearless Runes that will give a total of 10% damage and magic damage reduction. Alright, up next we have a number of offensive skills starting with Dragon Combo. This is an active skill which will attack an enemy with a kick dealing 400% attack damage at skill level 1, and up to 1,210% attack damage at skill level 10. This skill is used in combination with our next offensive skill, Fallen Empire. Fallen Empire is an active skill that will knock up an enemy dealing 1,260% attack damage at skill level 5. The enemy will then be snared for 2 seconds. The damage of this skill is increased by 50% if used after the Dragon Combo skill. Let's try it out. Here is Eldwin's base damage without Dragon Combo. And here it is after using the Dragon Combo. We can see here that the damage has significantly increased. Fallen Empire is the main grinding skill for Shuras. The only drawback is that it is a melee skill so it may be difficult to compete with the ranged classes. However, with good equips, it is definitely possible to one-hit mobs using Fallen Empire. Furthermore, this skill will enhance the damage of our next two offensive skills, Tiger Cannon and Hellgate. Tiger Cannon is an AoE active skill that will deal damage to enemies in an area and will cause the enemies to lose a percent amount of SP. This is used while Critical Explosion is active. Furthermore, as mentioned earlier, this will deal double damage if used after Fallen Empire. This is Eldwin's damage without Fallen Empire and with Fallen Empire. Note that this skill will consume two spirit bombs. Next, another skill that can be enhanced by Fallen Empire is Hellgate. This is an active skill that will launch an instant flurry of attacks on a single target. This will utilize five spirit bombs and will consume 20% of the max SP. Again, the damage will be doubled if used after Fallen Empire. Upon testing it out, here is Eldwin's damage without Fallen Empire and with Fallen Empire. In addition, the damage will increase by 1% for each 1% of the Shura's HP loss. Remember that Rising Dragon will cause the Shura to lose 1% HP every 2 seconds. Thus, this will synergize with Hellgate in which the damage is based on the HP loss. Again, here is Eldwin's base damage and here it is with lower HP. The lower the Shura's HP, the higher the damage. Alright, up next, let's take a look at a few debuff and crowd control skills. First up, we have Lion Howling. This is an active AoE skill which will deal damage to an enemy and surrounding units with a percent chance to fear them. At max skill level 5, would have a 60% chance to inflict the fear status. Note that this skill has a cooldown of 5 seconds. Upon trying it out, here we can see our character Maven moving uncontrollably as the fear state is inflicted. Note that the damage is quite small as compared to other single target offensive skills. Up next, we have Cursed Circle. This is a crowd control active skill in which Asura and the surrounding enemies will be unable to move or attack. 
At skill level 5, a maximum of 5 targets can be controlled for a duration of 3 seconds. Upon trying it out, we can see that Cursed Circle immobilizes the Shura himself and surrounding enemy units. Because it can affect multiple targets, this can be a useful skill for the War of Imperium. The effect will be removed when the caster attacks or dies. Note that this will consume one Spirit Bomb. Lastly, for the debuff skills, we have Gentle Touch Silence. This is an active skill which will deal attack damage to a single target with a percent chance to silence. At skill level 5, we'll have a 100% chance to silence. Note that the higher the caster's dexterity, the higher the damage. Upon trying it out, we can see here that Gentle Touch Silence can deal pretty decent damage. Let's try unequipping the weapon to demonstrate the silence effect. As we can see here at the lower right skill bar, Kelsey is unable to use any of her skills for 5 seconds. In addition, Gentle Touch Silence can go well with a finger offensive skill, but this will require a higher deck stat. Gentle Touch Silence plus finger offensive combo is a good grinding option for Shuras as you can use one skill while the other one is on cooldown. Up next, we have two supportive skills. First up, Gentle Touch Cure will restore HP to self and an ally target with a percent chance to cure all status ailments. Even if the Shura is frozen, petrified, or stunned, he or she can use this skill to recover. Note that this skill has a Spirit Bomb cost. At skill level 5, the chance to remove abnormalities is at 40%. Furthermore, the HP restore is based on the target's fit and the Shura's int. The higher the target's bit and the surest int, the higher the HP restore. Alright, for our next supportive skill, we have Gentle Touch Revitalize. This is an active supportive skill which will increase vit and max HP. At skill level 5, would have plus 10 vit and plus 10% max HP. This effect will last for 6 seconds and will consume 2 spirit bombs. Moving on to the passive skills, we have Transcendence. This will remove all of the Shura's status ailments every 10 seconds and will grant status ailment immunity for 1 second. As we can see here, our stone curse is automatically removed by the Transcendence passive. This is an excellent passive for survivability. And lastly, for the Shura skills, we have the passive Near Death Awaken. This will increase physical and magic damage reduction when the HP is below a certain percentage. At skill level 10, the damage reduction is at 30% when the HP is below 20%. This is a really good defensive skill in PvP and WoW. Activating the Near Death Awakened Transcendence runes will give us additional 2% attack when the passive is activated. There are 5 runes for this giving us a total of plus 10% additional attack. Alright, now that we've gone through all the Shuras skills, let's talk about the skill point allocation for Shuras. Here, we'll take a look at two Shura builds, one for MVP and PvP, and another one for farming. For the MVP and PvP build, it is suggested that you get the following skills. First, you need to prioritize maxing out Rising Dragon. To unlock this skill, allocate points on level 3 Near Death Awaken and then get level 10 Rising Dragon. After that, you should focus on unlocking and maxing out Hellgate. To unlock, you need to get the prerequisite skills first, which are level 3 Dragon Combo, level 3 Fallen Empire, and level 3 Tiger Cannon. Then just max out Hellgate to level 10. As for the remaining 8 points, allocation will be up to you. You may opt to get level 5 Gentle Touch Cure and level 3 Transcendence for survivability. Getting max level Cure Circle is also a good option for crowd control. For the farming build, here are the suggested skills to get. If you prefer using Fallen Empire for grinding, then get level 3 Dragon Combo and level 5 Fallen Empire. However, if you prefer using Gentle Touch Silence, then get level 1 Gentle Touch Cure to unlock Gentle Touch Silence, and then max it out to level 5. To achieve one hit kill on mobs, you may get level 10 Rising Dragon to boost your attack. The only drawback is that it also gives a debuff that reduces your HP over time. To compensate, you need to invest on the following. HP recovery items such as Swarm and Hot Meals, HP discharge from eating 1-star cooked foods, or hiring the mercenary kitty cat Goro to heal you. Alright, so far we've gone through all our newly unlocked Shura skills. I hope this video was helpful in giving us an idea on how all the Shura skills work. Make sure to stay tuned for more upcoming skills demo videos. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love for you to consider subscribing by hitting your subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.